Let's look at the amazing power of CSS backgrounds. So I've set up a blank um, HTML document here and we've simply got um, some an header tag, an HTML5 header tag, and we've got an empty div. And let's style up that div by using a background color property. So we've got background color equals red. That's the shorthand for red. That's exactly the same as writing FF0000. It's the same as that, but let's just use the shorthand for that. Let's give this div a height of 200 pixels and go into our browser and see what that looks like. So there it is. We have got a background color on our div. Very simple stuff. Let's also um, give a link within our div a background color as well. Background color of blue. Need to add in the link href and we'll go blank and blue link. Close that off, go back into our browser see if there's our link cell. So as we can see, we can give any HTML element a background color and we can also give it a background image as we'll see so let's go back into coda it's my uh, editor of choice but of course you can use any editor it's going to do exactly the same thing so let's go back and add in take away background color and we'll use background image uh, background image url equals and i've got a dog's image i've set up nice little doggy image so let's have a look at that and see what it does in our browser. Background image URL dog. It's dogs with an S. So there we go. There's our background color replaced with a background image. And let's explore this further and give it a background position of zero and zero and background repeat of no repeat. So what we've done there is give a background position of zero zero and a repeat of no repeat. And that means the image as we're going to see is not going to repeat and it's started from the left hand side and started from the top. That's because of our background position we've got here. So we've got to put our background position to 50%. That's going to put it 50% along that div in that horizontal position. And if we go 50% on the vertical value that's going to change it slightly. The, the reason we're not seeing any differences there because we've not got a big enough height on our div. So we've got 500. Then we can see that our vertical position is 50% as well. And that's exactly the same as writing center, center. 50% is exactly the same as writing that. And we see there's no difference there. What we really want to do though is instead of having these multiple background properties here, we can use a shorthand and that's simply like this. It's background colon and then you put a background color, although you don't have to, but it's always a good idea, but good practice with a background color in here. We can take this out. Then we use a repeat value and we're saying no repeat in here. Then we've got our position value. So let's put it back to 50% and 50%. Give that a space. Let's see what that does. We're not really expecting any change. That's exactly what we'd expect. There's no change on there because we've just replaced the values with exactly the same values. So let's also give this background um, a background to the link. And we can just copy and paste. That's probably the easiest way. So instead of blue, let's also give this, but I've set up a pattern and it's called carbon.jpg sorry and if we look at the html5 the link now let's make out and the background image has worked but let's just change the pattern so we've got a repeat on there but we don't need to put a repeat by default it's going to say no it's going to say repeat that so if we refresh that then we see our background image completely um, covering that link HTML5 element. Let's just make it a little bit more um, apparent and let's style our header um, up the top of the page. Um, we're just going to see this background pattern, just a bit more emphasis on it. So probably copy and paste is the easiest way. 
we can take out 50%, 50% again on both these because it's not going to matter by default. It's going to say 0, 0. And it, there we go. Our header has the background pattern on there as well. So as we can see, we can easily style up any element on the HTML page with a background pattern. Let's just style this a little bit better. Give the H1 a color. of white and let's also give our padding on our html5 header element of 58 pixels see what that does yeah that looks a little bit better it's just to show you the example of the background pattern there but that works uh, quite well and as we can see any html5 element we can style up with a background pattern there's also another css property background attachment and we can set that to fixed so we enter our browser at the moment and we can see that our background attachment just scrolls as we expected to with the div as we scroll down the page. But if we set this to fixed, then we see that our background attachment is fixed to the screen. And it doesn't matter where we scroll, it's going to always be fixed. So that's another option in your CSS background property. In the future, there are some also some other CSS properties for background you can use. You can boost background size, background origin, background clip. Let's have a look at all these three. Some projects you might be able to use. This is 2014, uh, April 2000, May sorry, 2014, and you might be able to use this in a production site, but it's IE9 and above. So look at background clip. So as we can see, if we experiment on the left hand side with the options, we've got border box, which is default. Then we've got padding box, which is the background size goes inside the padding and then we've got content box which it only starts at the actual content of the site so that's background clip let's have a look at background origin if we look by default this padding box and the background image is inside the border and then we've got border box which the background image is like on and starts from the border and we've got content box which the background image is from the content we've also got background size let's have a look at that background size and then it's always the horizontal and the width first so we've got let's say 100 pixels and then by 200 pixels tall let's see what that does in our browser now we've got 100 pixels wide and 200 pixels tall but still very much in a tiled manner what we can also do here which is great for responsive web design in some situations is use a percentage value here so we can use 20 percent and let's say 30% or yeah that'll do. And if we repeat that, then we've got it, we've got five tiles wide, and then we've got about three tall, which is exactly what we're expecting to see. So that's great. If you resize the browser in this situation, then we can see that their tiles resize as well, which is just fantastic. Let's now look at the full syntax for the shorthand for the background property. So first up, we have got our background color. Then we've got a URL with our image attachment and the path in there. Then we can have no repeat for our background tiling. Then comes our background position. So let's put center in there. Then up next comes our background sizing. So we can put in there 200 pixels by 200 pixels. Just remember to put in a backslash for that. That's really important for this to work. Then up next comes our background origin, so we can put um, content box. Then we can put border box up next is for our background clip. And if you were to omit these, um, the default to border box, but if you're only going to have one of them in there, it will relate to background origin. So if you've only got one in there, that's what it's going to do. So that completes uh, this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. Please see the website webpayload.com for the full demo files. Although they're quite short, they might be useful to some. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Keep up with the shows. Uh, the best way is probably on Twitter. My personal account is Johnny Mac, and there's the Web Payload account. There's also the RSS feed, and there is also traditional email, which is a great way to keep up with the shows. Thanks.